I recently discovered matzo ball soup when my friend Susie made it for me when I was feeling a little bit under the weather. She likes to call it a Jewish penicillin and I tell you what, it really does the trick. Now the first thing we need to do is get the soup on. So I've started with two very large carrots. Now you need a big pot for this when you're making a soup of this capacity. This is a 7.2 litre stock pot which is fantastic to fit loads of vegetables and lots of chicken. Also three stalks of celery that I'm going to roughly chop and a parsnip and I'm just going to again chop this into chunks and one onion and I'm going to leave the skin on cut it in half along with one shallot and I'm just going to just separate them. They can go in whole. Six cloves of garlic that I've separated and some peppercorns, just black peppercorns whole, about half a tablespoon and some herbs. Two fresh bay leaves, you can use dried bay leaves too for this. A small bunch of dill and this is what makes this chicken soup quite unique and a little bit of parsley. So I'll just take half of that, rip that up and that can go in. Now just make a little nest in all these vegetables so we can add our chicken. Now one whole chicken for this. You don't need to cut this chicken up whatsoever. This can go in whole. And to get more flavour into this soup, 400 grams of chicken wings. So that can also go in and just pop them in and around the chook, perfect. Now all I need to do is cover this with lots of water and the water should be cold. You want to bring this up to the boil. When it starts to gently simmer, then I'm going to skim off any of the impurities and I'm going to cook this low and slow for about one and a half hours. Now this soup is coming up to the boil now, but in the meantime I can start with the matzo balls. In a bowl I'm going to crack three eggs. Now there's two camps when it comes to matzo balls. This is what Susie always tells me. You can either have them really, really light, and some people really like them light and fluffy. They're very similar to dumplings. Or you can have a little bit more texture in them and make them a little bit heavier, particularly in really cold weather, that's when they're better. I'm going to go for the lighter version today. So three eggs into a bowl, whole eggs, and I'm going to mix this with some grapeseed oil. Now traditionally you would use smolts, but if you don't have that, then this works a treat too. So that's three tablespoons of grapeseed oil in there, just a low neutral oil, and then I'll break up those eggs and give that a really good whisk. Perfect. And this is the hero of the matzo ball. This is matzo meal and you can get it from most supermarkets now. This is unleavened bread that has been finely ground into a meal or like a flour. You can see it's quite coarse. I'm going to add some flavourings to this. So a quarter of a teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder and white pepper powder and some baking powder just to give these matzo balls a little bit of a lift. Now I'm going to mix this just with a fork and make a well in the centre and then we can start adding our egg mixture. And then I'm just going to combine this all together and then that's ready to go. So I'm going to put this to the side and let's have a look at this soup. You can see some of the impurities rising to the surface. So just with a ladle, I'll just use this, skim the top off. Now that it's coming up to a simmer, I'm just going to put the lid on and again, gently cook it, check it every now and then. It's the whole excitement of making a soup like this, tending to it until it's absolutely perfect. You can see that it's reduced by a third and we've got a golden colour. Now I'm going to very carefully take this chicken out of the pot and place it onto a large platter like this. I'll also take some of the chicken wings out because the meat on there is just so soft and tender. And now what I'm going to do is strain this into a clear pot. Now just over here you can see my pot there and just carefully bring that closer 
and strain this in until we've got a good amount of soup or as much soup as you like, depending on how many people you're serving this to. And this is the liquid that I'm going to poach the matzo balls in. So I'll just put this back on the heat. I'll remove that strainer. So we've got pure broth in there. And we can start forming our matzo balls. So I like to have another bowl of water here. It just helps form them. So use two tablespoons. I'll take the fork out there. Now you can make these as big or as small as you like, but I'm going to make tablespoon size balls. Just like that. Just wet your hands, place the matzo in your fingers and then form perfect round dumplings. Just like that. Now these are going to cook for about 10 to 15 minutes in the broth once it's come to the boil. In the meantime, I can start taking all the meat off this chicken because I can add this again to the soup at the very last minute before I start serving. These matzo ball are looking fantastic. Look at them, they've held their shape nicely. And now we can start plating up. So I've reserved a little bit of the carrot. I love sweet carrot when it's cooked for a long time. And some of that chicken. This chicken is going to warm up straight away when I pour that hot broth on top. Now I'm going to take out two or three of these matzo balls. They are really filling, so three is plenty. And this really is a meal in itself. And then now let's pour this soup. And you're going to feel great after eating this. A few sprigs of dill in the soup. Matzo ball soup, Susie's matzo ball soup. I hope she's proud of me and I hope it tastes just as good as hers. You know what, I'll taste now just to double check. Oh, that is good.